Given that episode 3 of The Web of Fear remains missing, we shall spend this particular retrospective reading out behind the scenes information relating to the production. This story directly follows on from The Enemy of the World. The Doctor is seen to have first a plaster and a scar on his left cheek in episode 1 from a wound he sustained in that story. Only episodes 1, 2, 4, 5 and 6 of this six part story exist in the BBC archives as 16mm black and white film telerecordings. Episode 3 is the only missing episode known definitively to have an existing copy, but not in the BBC archives. It was recovered along with the other episodes in Nigeria, but was apparently stolen by a station employee and sold to a private collector, likely due to its high value as the first appearance of the Brigadier. This story acts as a sequel to The Abominable Snowmen, which also featured Yeti, The Great Intelligence, and Professor Travers. Patrick Troughton appears only in the reprise of episode 2, as he was on holiday during the week it was recorded. As a result, the first meeting between the Doctor and Lev Bridge Stewart happens off-screen before episode 3. Nicholas Courtney was originally cast in the role of Captain Knight, with David, while David Langton was cast as Colonel Lev Bridge Stewart. However, Langton gave up the role to accept another more attractive offer of work, and so Courtney was given the role of Lev Bridge Stewart and Ralph Watson was cast as Knight. To promote this story, a specially shot trailer featuring the Doctor in the London Underground talking to the audience about the upcoming Yeti adventure was featured at the end of The Enemy of the World Episode 6. The trailer is included in the BBC Audio release of that story and is currently known to exist only as an audio recording. The trailer was later animated and featured on the animated release of this story. This is Peter Bryant's first story as full-time producer. Desmond Colum Jones was supposed to play a commissionaire, but the part was dropped in rewrites. It is stated that this story takes place approximately 40 years after The Abominable Snowmen, Adventure in Tibet, which it states took place in 1935. Professor Travers is once again portrayed by Deborah Watling's father, Jack Watling. Deborah recalled that the sight of her dad in old age makeup made her blow several takes by laughing. The original plan was to film in the London Underground, specifically in Aldwych and Covent Garden stations, but London Transport demanded an exorbitant fee and indicated that filming would be restricted to just a handful of overnight hours. It was decided to recreate London Underground on studio sets. The recreations are so realistic, the BBC apparently received a letter of complaint from London Transport, claiming filming had been done on their property without permission. The scene in Julius Silverstein's house originally took place in the Natural History Museum, but they declined permission for the BBC to film there. The closing credits for each episode, except episode 6, were rolled against an image of the pulsing web. Once again, the scripts did not describe the Yeti in any great detail, so costume designer Martin Bauer kept the same basic design that he created for the creatures in The Abominable Snowmen, but altered them slightly so they would not look the exact same for two consecutive stories. During the interview between Harold Chorley and Captain Knight in Episode 1, it is mentioned that the Army Task Force's commanding officer, who has been killed in an earlier Yeti attack, was Colonel Pemberton. This was an in-joke referring to former story editor Victor Pemberton, who worked with Mervyn Heisman and Henry Lincoln on The Abominable Snowman. Another in-joke features in the official BBC reconstruction, an animated version of Episode 3, when Driver Evans takes a chocolate bar from a platform vending machine. The bar's wrapper is shown to read Canfield's Fairy Milk Chocolate, a reference to director Douglas Canfield and to comply with the BBC's policy of not displaying brand name products on screen. As episode 3 has yet to be recovered, it remains unknown as to whether the wrapper was shown in detail on screen and what name it bore. Bearing in mind and that the vending machine was unbranded, it is likely the wrapper was likewise. Episode 1, then the only episode of the story known to exist, was shown along with The Abominable Snowman, Episode 2, as part of BSB's Doctor Who Weekend in September 1990, under the banner of The Yeti Rarities. The surviving Episode 1, at the time the only episode known to exist, was repeated on BBC4 on the 26th of June 2004, as part of a night about cult television of the 1960s. Other programs that night included a documentary about the BBC Radiophonic Workshop and an episode of Verity Lambert's series, Adam Adamant Lives. Episode 1 was also repeated on BBC4 as part of the BBC's London Underground Night on the 18th of March 2007. Episodes 2 and 4 to 6 were revealed to have been returned to the BBC on the 11th of October 2013. The year in which the Web of Fear takes place is not directly stated in the story. The most information given on the matter is in Part 2, when Edward Travers says, that it has been about 40 years since he met the Doctor in 1935. A number of Doctor Who stories in other media have placed the event of the story to an exact year. The novel Who Killed Kennedy states that this story takes place in August 1966, one month after the events of The War Machines and The Faceless Ones. 
the novelization of Downtime, the novel Revolution Man, and the mockumentary Global Conspiracy, all contain minor references to the events of the Web of Fear occurring in 1968. It is a central fact that the, in the Lethbridge Stewart series of novels that the Web of Fear took place in February 1969, the short story of the Enfolded Time offers a date which is most accurate to the actual story, March 1975. It also states that both March, February 1969 and March 1975 are accurate, depending on the individual, a result of 20 years of history being condensed into 10 due to the Doctor's frequent visits to Earth. Oh. A unit chronology article in the 1991 Doctor Who magazine Winter Special, written in an in-universe style, dates the events to 1971, seemingly taking its cue from the fact that the invasion, said to occur four years later, was placed in 1975 by contemporary publicity material. We'll close it here just for the sake of not angering any copyright. So we shall reveal the rest of the, read out the rest of these behind the scenes information in episode four of the retrospective. Thanks again, my good and dear friends. Appreciate it very immensely. Enjoy yourselves now. Have the best possible day and night you've ever imagined ever. Thanks again.